Hey everybody, I'm back. I took way too much time off and I'm so glad that I'm ready to come back and show you all more thrift flips, DIYs, home makeovers, and all the things. I will have a new series coming up, so make sure you stay tuned for that. It'll be a making home series and I'll be showing you how I turn this rental that I'm not happy with and I'm gonna make it into the home that I truly love. I've been here for way too long and I've been designing and doing things for other people, but not for myself. So anyways, what we're gonna do today, I thought I'd show you a quick DIY of turning this mirror that I've had for years, literally years. It's this brown mirror, it has like the metallic undertones. It's got a lot of great texture as you can see. And it's not my style anymore. I think what I want to do is I asked over on Instagram, if you're not following, go to Handcrafted From Home or on Instagram, Facebook, join the Handcrafted From Home creative group. You can go over there and you'll see all the sneak peeks and behind the scenes and lives and things like that about things that I'm making in this way. I'm going to do the cement look, which I've been known to do on other items as well. And I like the mossy textures, but this one, I just want the flat matte cement look and I'm going to be using DIY paint and white wax. So. Let's get started and I'll show you how I quickly make over this mirror with just a little bit of paint. All right, you all, so clearly you can see I'm just cleaning this up. I use some all-purpose cleaner because I had a lot of dust on it and had been sitting on the wall for a long time and no, I have not been the best Susie homemaker, so it was a little dirty. And I'm just going to scrub that down because with DIY paint, you really don't have to sand or anything, not usually. This has somewhat of a shiny finish, but it's nothing too bad to where I need to sand anything down. Um, as you can see, there's some dirt on the rag, and I just want to get all that gunk off. And then, always make sure, just in case, to wet your rag or spray water down and wipe it off, because you don't want any of that cleaner being left behind, because it could potentially affect your paint finish. All right, let's get started with Debbie's Design Diaries. DIY paint and weathered wood. This is an amazing deep gray. Goes great with so many other colors and is perfect for a base layer if you're wanting a darker color underneath. One thing I'm making sure of is trying to stay with the grain, so to speak. As you can see, the indents that are on this mirror go in a certain direction and I really just want to try my best to follow that pattern. I went ahead and used a heat gun which is not necessary if you have time in between. I'm going to take some of those thicker layers of paint and rub it back to add some texture. This is what it looks like with our first layer of paint. Those darker spots might still be a little wet and it's also where the thicker paint was and it has some texture and not all of it is within the grains of the piece but I'm still loving it so far. So now let's go in with using a lighter gray, one that's more stone or cement like, and gravel road is absolutely perfect for this finish and this look if you're trying to get it. Another option would also be trying one in Waverly. I think silver is probably a good one. Still is also a really pretty gray from Waverly. I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the weathered wood, go around my edges, try to go in the same direction as the creases that are in the actual piece and then just layer it on it, but I'm not going to let it draw the way. I am going to use something that I really have never used before for its actual purpose, which is a staining sponge. I'm testing it out, just trying to see how it goes, and I am loving it because it's pulling back that top layer of the gravel road, and then it shows the weather wood beneath, and it also adds a lot of texture to it. I'm just absolutely in love with this new technique. Be sure that your bottom layer is not wet because then you will start to blend the colors unless you want a blended paint finish because DIY is amazing at blending, make sure your bottom layer is dry. Anytime you are using something to distress, always pay attention to each angle and side of what you are using, like a sander or even a sponge like this, because you can see there are some lines that are coming out because of the edge of the sponge, and I really wanted to make sure I didn't have too many of those. I made sure to use the softest part of the sponge for my distressing and pulling back of the paint. Look at this beautiful texture. I am so excited about how this is turning out. 
it is really hard for me not to do a vintagey textured finish because I love it so so much. Here you can see a little bit more close up on how much lighter it is once it dries. Of course, like I said, if you were to go over it with clear wax or maybe a liquid patina from DIY paint or a clear sealer, it will deepen up that paint just a little bit. It will go to a color between the color in the jar and the color it is when it's dried. Debbie's Design Diary Light Wax, one of my favorite products from Debbie's Design Diary. It adds so much softness and whenever you put it over a deep dark color it is absolutely stunning. White wax is perfect for getting that stone look. I'm going to rub it in but I always make sure that I go back in the direction of the grain or the pattern that is indented into the actual piece. I don't want to have too many streaks and I'm wiping it back immediately. I don't want to let it sit too long. This black wax is so rich and creamy and it was actually a last minute decision. I like the look of the white wax but I needed a little bit more depth. If you look at pictures of cement pottery and things of that sort you will see some really dark spots and aging all over the piece. So not only do we have the weathered wood we also have the black wax to help with that. I'm really making sure to go very, very light. As you can see, I'm dabbing some of the wax that I put on my brush, which is already very little, and then putting it onto the rag, and then I'll rub it in immediately. I don't let it sit for any amount of time. I want to make sure to go along the edges of this piece and deepen up the weathered wood that's on here and over some of the lighter gray of the gravel road. It's just going to give depth. It's something that is really fun to do, so play with multiple waxes. You don't have to just use one because here I'm going back with white wax on spots that I thought were a little too distracting to the eye and that I thought needed to be lightened up a little bit. So just play around and have fun, especially when it's your own piece. You can do whatever you want with it. Look at the difference in this mirror. It is amazing what a little bit of paint and wax can do and it wasn't anything crazy. This is two layers of paint, just two. Oh my gosh, look at that texture. Something you need to remember when using DIY wax is the wax freakout because it'll look uneven at first. So just wait 24 hours and you can buff it some more, bring it up to a higher sheen if you like, and then it is all set and ready to go. So let's look at the final result. Now let's remember what it looked like before adding all of that beautiful DIY paint and wax. <laughs> Dark. I've never seen you clearer than now. We're flying high, floating somewhere up in the clouds. We're going out of ourselves. Can you feel it? Almost like I don't know if it's real. Cause when we're doing our thing, we're the wheels that won't stop turning. So take me on a trip. Chip, chip, nah, chip, chip, chip. Oh, I flick the switch, kill the lights. Oh, I wasted. Thank you all for checking out this video. I'm so excited that I got to play around with some more DIY paint. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and go to all the things, and I will see you all next time. Bye.